Mention the word histogram to anyone who's ever taken a statistics class and they'll histogram. <coughs> but fear not, because this video is not a math pop quiz and your camera's histogram is not intended to give you cold sweats. Believe it or not, it's simpler than you think and actually, it's here to help. Greetings data phobes and data files and welcome to Professional Photography Tips. My name is Josh Cripps and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. Possibly the greatest gift digital photography has given photographers is the histogram because it makes guessing at exposures a thing of the past. So take my hand and join me on a magical journey as we uncover what a histogram is, what it represents, and how you can use it to take better exposures. First, a little disclaimer. The world of histograms can be complicated, and while I do get into those complications in other videos, for now, for the sake of simplicity and clarity, when I say the histogram, I'm specifically referring to the white histogram which your camera displays during playback. And all that white histogram is, is your camera's best guess at what all the brightness values contained in your photo are. Let's take a closer look. The horizontal axis of the histogram shows all the brightness values possible in your photo, from pure black all the way on the left, to middle gray in the dead center, to pure white on the far right. And the vertical axis of your histogram represents how many pixels in your photo have that particular brightness value. In other words, the more pixels you have at a certain brightness in your photo, the bigger the corresponding spike on the histogram will be. Let's take a look at a specific example to understand a bit more clearly. Here we have an image that's made entirely of middle gray. There's no black, no white, and nothing else except middle gray, meaning that all the pixels in the image exist in a single tonal value. So when we look at the histogram for this image, we'll see a spike of pixels in the dead center at middle gray and nothing else. Similarly, with a pure black image, we'll see a single spike all the way on the left-hand side of the histogram. And with a pure white image, we'll see a spike all the way on the right. Makes sense, yeah? But these are very simple examples, so let's move on to something a little more interesting. Here's a photo of some trees and mountains on a very gray day. As you can see, there are three distinct tonal regions in the image. Very dark areas in the tree branches, mildly dark areas in the mountains, and lighter areas in the sky. And if we think about what that means in terms of pixels, it means there are lots of very dark pixels here, lots of medium dark pixels here, lots of light pixels here, and not a lot of anything else. So looking at a histogram of this image, we should expect to see three large spikes representing those dominant tonal regions. And indeed we do. Now even though your photos will undoubtedly get more complicated than this, the essence of what the histogram is telling you is exactly the same. So if you want to Excuse start- Excuse me, professor. This is all very interesting, but what do I do with this information? Ah, well, I'm so glad you asked. Since we now understand that a histogram is your camera's way of representing all the brightness values in your image, you can use it to tell if your photo is underexposed, overexposed, or if you've clipped any shadows or highlights. For example, in an image like this, my histogram is telling me that the bulk of my image data is quite dark. It's darker than middle gray, in fact. So I should increase my exposure. And in this image, the histogram shows that most of my photo is very bright. And in fact, here you can see a spike of pixels all the way on the right, meaning they are pure white. And what this means is that your image is overexposed, you have highlight clipping, and you've lost detail in your photo. So you best darken your exposure. And there you have it, understanding and using the histogram in a nutshell. Of course, this isn't the full story, so be sure to subscribe to the channel to see the next part of this video when histograms attack. In the meantime, you should check out this video, which goes through a method of using the histogram to get a great exposure every single time. You can also subscribe to my newsletter for more photo tips and techniques. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.